is the answer to the scholar's question. Just so happens that the scholar's name was Rabbi Pinchas Horowitz of the city of Frankfurt on the Main, who wrote the famous book, the Haflora and Panim Yofais on the Torah. And he was serious about it. The question was a very profound question. It was gnawing at him. How could you thank God or bless God for things that are bad? And so, after coming to the Mizritcher Magid, the Rebbe directed him to go to the Rebbe of Zisha. And the Rebbe of Zisha was scrubbing down the horses in the stable of the Magid. Because the Rebbe of Zisha was very humble. And he thought that in order to be held out and supported by the Magid, he had to do something that was worthwhile. And he couldn't think of anything worthwhile for somebody as humble as he except to clean the horses. And so this was the scene. Rapinchas, the, the author of the Hafloa, comes and he sees a man skinny to the bone. Eyes look sunken because he hardly sleeps. Whistling a happy tune and scrubbing a horse in a place that smells. And he asks him, my dear man, the Rebbe sent me to you. Answer my question, please. I need to know how can you bless God for bad, just as you bless God for good. How can we fulfill that statement of the Mishnah? And the Rebbe of Zisha said to him, I know for sure the Rebbe did not send you to me. For you see, nothing bad ever happened to me. So how could I tell you how to bless God for things that are bad? My friends, many things happened to Rebzusha throughout his lifetime that were very, very difficult and very hard to take. And yet, Rebzusha remained cheerful because he knew and believed that everything in his life came directly from God, who was the all-merciful, and therefore really had to be good. And therefore nothing bad ever happened in his life. That was what the Rebbe Rebbe Zisha said. And he maintained a happy face. He was happy throughout his entire lifetime. Not because he had things, not because of a special relationship with God, but because he was a Jew, he was alive. Because the state of a human being is to be happy. Because even if bad things happen to good people, the bad things come from God and therefore are ultimately really good. We cannot understand why they're good. We think they're punishments. We think that they're negative. They appear that way. And truly, we have to empathize and sympathize with people when they're suffering. We have to help them. But ultimately, we have to understand in retrospect that the world is going to a particular goal. And the goal is to come back to Jerusalem and God himself, God will appear with all of his glory to everyone. And everyone will rise, all the dead will rise. And all those who suffered will be restored. And there will be restitution for all those who have lost things. And those who are wicked and took what didn't belong to them, they will be shamed forever. And so, ultimately, everything is good. Ultimately, all will turn out to be good. In the interim, we don't necessarily see that. But a person who has the right perspective and understands that everything is coming from God, believes and is able to feel, at least in most cases, that everything is really good. And therefore, the person really should be happy. There's no reason to be sad. A person has to be happy in the presence of God at all times. And since God is everywhere, we must be happy all the time. And that's the message for this Simchas Torah. Be happy. Be happy with the Torah. Be happy with your Jewishness. Be happy as a human being. Be happy with your neighbors. And don't worry who wins the presidential election. Because as the Rebbe said, there are no two sides, because ultimately, we are all children of the same God. There is only one side, and that one side, if we are on that one side, we are on God's side, it doesn't make a difference.